Morning scalpers, afternoon from London. It's 1 pm just after here in London. And uh, we are getting ready to trade the ADP employment news, which is a runner or runner to NFP on Friday. See, it's here in about 10 minutes' time. And then we're going to be trading the marketing, manufacturing, the ISM a bit later on, 30 minutes after the open. So we've got a couple of nice trades to get into, and then we finish off with uh, oil and uh, as the gas report later on as well. Now, obviously, as always, go to the website www.mohawkforex.com if you want to learn how to uh, through Scalp, like we do on our three minute time frame, get access to our system and join our VIP Discord group. So, um, just been watching uh, the markets basically today pull back, and there was some bad news even with the German and the Euro news PMI, but still the market dipped only a few pips and carried on on its upward trend, pulling back all the losses from yesterday uh, from all the kind of COVID news as there's mixed reports about how effective the vaccines are, how mild the, the new variant is, Omicron. It's all kind of, the, I think the market just went sod it and decided to recoup the losses. And as you can see on here on DAX, it's been a nice steady incline. So it caught us out a little bit. We took a couple of losses on the news on this. That's fine. It does happen sometimes. Um, it doesn't change the strategy or the way we, we trade. Uh, just sometimes there's news and then there's bigger news and obviously the news of the PMI was not bad enough for the markets to kick back over the you know COVID news so uh, we'll see what happens with the ADP jobs report I know the ISM is the bigger one in focus uh, but ADP is always a good indicator as you can see here higher than expected figure it's going to be bullish for the dollar lower and we're expecting a 525k as opposed to a 571 from last month so we've already predicted and priced in it to be lower so obviously for us to take a sell uh you know we want this to be good news we're going to go the opposite way as we do market manipulation because it's pre a cash open so if this news is better than expected we'll sell the us 30 and the other way around and then we'll go reverse on the open now that's usually pretty much bang on, but obviously we've got all this news about COVID in focus as well. So we're keeping a tight eye on that. US 30 has followed DAX really and had a steady incline, a bit of a range and push back up. A rejection here on our trend line. We had some key levels that were broken, but uh, don't trade the US 30 in, uh, in London session usually anyway. At the moment, it's kind of a 50% pull to the downside. We're having some kind of pullback here. Uh, we're waiting for the news now. We've got seven minutes to go. If we get kind of like under 525, worse than expected, we'll probably go in for a cheeky little buy back to our KG line there, our baseline. So I'll set that as a potential in and out TP because we're going counter trend. You can set that as a TP if the news is worse than expected and if the news is better than expected then we'll continue this drop down possibly just above our next points of interest but obviously I will probably get out way before that anyway just a hundred points is my usual on the ADP and then we can go the reverse looking at market structure on the open obviously this is looking like a nice second leg M we had a double tap at uh, 3483 zone here in our blue zone a rejection we could have got another sell already to be honest with you uh, but i wasn't watching us 30. So it's going to be interesting to see uh justin's joined me today for a little bit from arizona on the road which is nice a roving trader back at it not too far out of las vegas but we're going to make money on the markets today and not on the slot machines <laughs> they lose it all in vegas <laughs> that's the way so like I say you can trade gold if you want gold has been performing actually better than US 30 on the news more accurately so again um, with gold with the news as it's pre-market we will go with 
the news. So if the news is better than expected, we'll take a buy on gold. If the news is worse than expected, we'll take a sell on gold. There's a potential of four trades. We'll usually do two trades on this. We'll just wait and see. And it all depends how big the result is away from the predicted result. Well, that's probably one of the reasons why we didn't get a severe drop. And again, I jumped in too quick. Even I make mistakes. I kind of jumped in on the red and didn't check the result after it entered the trade. As you can see, look, 57.4 to 57.6. That's pretty much as expected. Only down a little bit from the previous. So really, it's no kind of... It was no surprise that the market didn't actually drop because it's kind of like, OK, we almost got it right. And the market continued on upward spiral. So did the euro lot 58.4. So really don't always go on the red and green. You've actually got to look at the results. It's got to be a big enough difference to shift the market. And the one that did work was the euro, was the French one. It always affects the DAX. And that did actually, you know, was actually 1% way better. And the market did push up. I'd missed out on that. I, I didn't, didn't get in on this one. And then I obviously jumped in the sales and got burnt. Only about $120. But, you know, it does happen. And what you got to find, what you got to explain to yourself is why. And I've just explained why. The reason was it wasn't that the market was tricking me or manipulation. It was the fact that this result was not strong enough to push the market down from the previous highs. We had French... Uh, sorry, Italian PMI that was good. You know, we had the Spanish one that was pretty much as expected. Um, retail sales weren't particularly that bad. They did drop a little bit. The PMIs are always more powerful. So again, that's just a case of just not jumping in just because it's red. Look at the result. I needed to be below 57 for us to take 100 points um, on the sale. So again, you know. It's all explainable. So on ADP, if this comes out at 524, 525, you know, that's a that's a good result. And we should see the manipulation side of it, US study just come down a little bit. So we'll go we'll go the opposite way and gold will go with the direction and we'll leave the trades running until we, we hit profit. That's you know, simple as we've got three minutes to go. And then we've got 90 minutes till the manuf manufacturing, the ISM and market manufacturing. But the ISM is the big one at 61. And then we'll trade oil and then we're done. Got Bloomberg on in the background. Hope you can hear that. Just keeping on the general news. We're live reporting on this news as well. Just checking on US 30. As you can see, it's positioned nicely for a drop, so we want the news to be good, so we get a little drop before a bounce up. That's usually what we find. RSI is 40. It is a crime. Tom Keen. Joe Ferro. Lisa Bramis. Bob Michael. Bob, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Equities up 55 on the S&P, advancing 1.2%. From New York, with bond yields higher, four basis points to 148, and crude up to 68.28, up by 3.2%. For our audience worldwide, heard on radio, seen on TV, this is Bloomberg. With the first one news, I'm Rishi Kiyosu. The Federal Reserve Treasurer Powell has given a clear sign that the central bank is shifting to tighter monetary policy. He told Congress that China is using the word transit to mean when thinking about inflation. Powell acknowledged the trend of rising prices is proving more powerful and persistent than expected. That could lead to interest rate hikes sooner than anticipated. The U.S. and Japan are amongst the countries ready to impose. I have my charts up right now. Do we pull back above that 1800 area? We're still down 70. Area on gold. Well, gold was 1784, just pulling back. We're getting ready for the news look. Here we go. And Japanese airlines have halted new inbound bookings for this month. Got one minute to go. Covid in adults at risk of developing severe illness. 
Trump again. Vladimir Putin is accusing the U.S. and its allies of threatening Russia. He told foreign ambassadors that, quote, the threat on our western frontier is really growing. The issue has to do with the war by Russian forces near Ukraine. Tomorrow, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will meet Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Stockholm. It will be the highest level talks in weeks. The match group has agreed to pay $441 million to settle all claims related to the trial was being held in New York. The issue is whether the match group control of the shareholder of IAC attracted cheated Tinder executives out of billions by the following deleting apps evaluation. Global News 24 hours today on Aaron on Bloomberg Quick Take, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts. Instead of working alone, don't we have a better chance of solving all the world's biggest challenges when we work together? Right, here we go. We've got 20, 30 seconds, ADP employment change. Let's see what we get. We're loaded up on gold, we're loaded up on US 30. And inflationary pressures are high, and, and it is therefore appropriate, in my view, to consider wrapping up the taper of our asset purchases, which we actually announced at the November meeting, perhaps a few months sooner. Chairman Powell shaking things up in this market in his testimony to the Senate Banking Committee yesterday. Goes in front of the House a little bit later this morning from New York City this morning. Good morning. Tom Keane, Lisa Brown, no. Jonathan Fennell. No. Some ADP numbers. Here's the price action. Equities up 54 on the S&P, advancing 1.2%. This equity market has been all over the place. The Nasdaq 100 up 213, advancing one3 Three percent into the bond market yields down, yields up, yields down, yields yeah, up. Exactly. That's the story. Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and again this Wednesday. So yields up four basis points, one forty-eight thirty-four. Crude with a bounce up by three. ADP better than expected. Good one for gold. Around the corner. That next Fed meeting, December fifteenth. Yeah, Twenty seconds here, John, and also we need to note the real yield, negative one point zero five, has done nothing here as we await for ADP. How much work do they need to do to tighten financial? Exactly. Slow printing out on here, but there you go, five three four, better than expected. We are so far away from the end of accommodation. We are so so far away from that rare occurrence restrictive as well lost all connection easy. tom yeah and, with and any Bob michael was great on that with any kind of minutes of work <laughs> 534 with the number and more. Here's Mike McKee. Morning, Mike. Good morning, John. We're trying to figure out exactly where the numbers come out, but they do uh, add uh, more jobs than. It's going to get out of it on gold now. Last month, of course, was 400. Brilliant. While they, they've got two wins on gold there. It's always hard to tell because they come back to significant. Going on US 30. 534,000 for the ADP employment change, which is better than the forecast of 525. And it does support the idea that we saw some improvement in November. A lot of analysts thinking that uh, the November numbers. ADP news. There's a nice buy on gold. It's efforts to move towards. Uh, yeah, well done. Because now they have enough people who have the jobs. No big moves on the back of these numbers, Mike, this morning, as you might expect off the back of ADP. Yields still higher at the front end by three basis points. Tom on tens, yields, yields up three, three basis, basis points, points to about yeah. 148. Yeah, 148, and it's a different feel than it was two days ago. Mike, because of this, and I know you're going to dive in and look at the subsections of ADP, and we go over this every month, but more than any other month, I'm tilted to 10 a.m. this morning, and ISM manufacturing. How important is that to you? And how do you use the ADP was a winner there. It was about $150. Nice push up. Whether or not the manufacturing sector is strong, but there's US 30. That it is at this point because everybody's buying. Leave this reversal. Some signs that exports are ramping up, which will get an indication in the ISM numbers. And we have seen uh, signs, obviously, that prices are remaining high. And so we'll be looking at the uh, prices paid number for. Uh, nice, nice spike up, bit of manipulation. And now we're waiting for the drop to do something. You look at manufacturing in this uh, ADP report, they're predicting 50,000 additional jobs were created in manufacturing, which uh, would be a significant number and suggests Go. that maybe some of the log Off it now. There you go. Beautiful. Well, Mike, the reason why so many people are trained heavily on the ADP report is not because it's so predictive. Neutral zone is 49. Some insight into Friday's payrolls report, which may be one of the most important jobs reports of the year, especially. Only went three lots on this one as well. Smaller. I just lowered my lot size. Gold was 0.5 this time. Well, it was just three on. Uh, 
market still in flux by a pen. On US this time. It depends on what you want to use it for. If you want to use it to predict the absolute number that you're going to get in terms of payrolls, it's not very good at that. But it does give you the magnitude and direction of the way things are going in general. Yep. That's the so thing. It gives you the magnitude and the direction. Yeah, yeah, that we are seeing additional job gains and maybe lead some people to uh, excuse me, adjust their forecasts a little bit. The question is uh, for the... Uh, payrolls report though is how many people are coming back into the labor force are we seeing that log jam yeah. i talked about ranging it around a little bit i'm not going to hold much longer on this also looking at the candy market you've got your economic regime you're going to listen to jerome powell today and what i notice is off of the crater of november of uh, november 26th Apple's going to push down the ball 47 look is up ray point six percent it's sort of the American about forty dollars in profit on this at the moment. People are voting for we took the win on on gold. We're not to be too greedy. Take the market extremely volatile at the moment. Well, I think what's happening. And then we we'll look for the opposite on the open in about an hour, but we can get in and out on the RSI in between. In the meantime, on this. Concerns about what's going to happen to the economy because of the virus, then people tend to think that tech stocks are going to be more valuable because okay. uh, so people are going to be economy. working from home and using more okay. technology. So that may have something to do with it. The issue that came up this morning somebody asked me about was the uh, reaction in the markets to Powell yesterday. Obviously, there was a big reaction in bonds and stocks. They both sold off. Uh, but today they seem to be coming back, which would be good news for the Fed Watch. basically telling them that we're not going to have a major change. Gold was a nice, look at that, the nice spike. Idea of the Fed changing you can go market. either way, but you've got to choose the way, choose the strategy, and we know gold, go with the news, dropped, but also we got the buy here, look, that was our TP, that was in and out, nice little buy, playing with the news, and then we'll go the reverse. On the open now it will drop, just as US. 30 will pop again look again it's 40, 48 it's to 47 I'm not going to mess around too much we know it ranges a little bit but the direction's right we're in profit again we're all living it's december everybody's moving around and it seems like if we get 30 40 dollars that will do and and i think all the politicians including the exiting de blasio are 47 look let's go that seems to be the theme, John. He's discussing, of course, Always US 30 takes its time, which is good. It's always a slower move in. Broadly, Tom, Broadly. for vaccination. That's now, the discussion have, in Europe this morning. We have a mandate to get historical perspective, and we can. As Elaine Kamark joins us now, senior fellow at Brookings, her magnificent book, I Five. Couldn't Screw Up. Elaine, let me cut to the chase as the president speaks daily trying to right the ship. How is President Biden screwed up? Well, I think that uh, there was one screw up, which was F F down F and that six. began a slide down. Um, but I think basically he's he's coping with a very complicated situation. You know, if you haven't read it, have a look at Stu Eisenstadt's book on the Carter presidency. The chapter on inflation <clears throat> is just heartbreaking um, because there's not many. Brilliant. I got out of those two. That's it. Took the sale. Stuff. And we've got 22 and 20, so we've got about $60 on that as well. There you go. So there are four trades on the ADP. Two on gold, two on US 30. Nice and easy, like you say, going the opposite to the market. Not falling for the old manipulation. Actually trading the manipulation instead. Hoping that it is transitory, as Krugman and some of his economists have, have indicated. You own the high ground on a compare and contrast to the 70s. When people say we risk the dismal Hold 70s, on. how do you respond? Well, I don't think we can quite compare it. I think we can compare the, the political angst that was caused, that was Coffee but we can't quite compare it because we do have this unique situation of the pandemic hang, hanging over us. A nice drop, so if it hits our bigger TP, like I say, you just gotta just gotta hang on, believe in the strategy, believe in the system. We know how the market works, manipulation. Gold is always quicker to move to the news events, and um, 
major builds, the money will start flowing into the economy, um, where the, the log jams at the ports will be unjammed, et cetera. And people think that maybe by the spring, things are going to settle down just in time. US 30 is always slower. As you can see now, look, it's reversed. Think they're going to be. There's the gold. Look at that perfect look. There you go. Just a bit of manipulation, and there you go. Look, goes where the news against normal trend, and we know that. So again, there's the breakout zone. Look, hit. There's the perfect. Could have had that as your TP. Here's where we want to get. We want to get gold back to. Ideally, the 1800 mark. We're going to get a drop on the open with gold, but very pleased and also in the house and the, the look at that a us 30 now pushing down beautiful down to our bigger tp look now i'm already out but it shows you set and hold that if you want and the areas that voted for Biden, the suburbs, the urban centers, they gained population in the last 10 years. So there is a, it's glacial, okay, but there is a mammoth demographic shift going on here, which makes it uh, easier for the Democrats to avoid at least a, a terrific bloodbath in the midterms. When we talk about demographics, I have to go to some of the controversy over travel recently in light of the pandemic, and, and many countries are becoming more closed. I'm wondering, from an election standpoint, how this is being uh, translated to the public for both the Democrats and the Republicans, this knee-jerk response to close borders at a time when the science uh, really mm -hmm. says that this virus goes beyond. Well, I think that this is one of the trickiest things politicians have to deal with, um, because clearly in not just our country, but all over the world, people are sick of staying home. They're sick of the closures. They're sick of the mandates. And, and all sorts of paranoia is arising around the mandates. I mean, this is bizarre notion that somebody floated the other day that somehow in South Africa, they decided to help Joe Biden with the midterms by deciding to have a new um, COVID variant. I mean, you know, there's all sorts of craziness going on out there. Uh, and I think that politicians have a tough road because they, they want to keep the spread down, obviously. They get blamed if the spread gets out of control. And people the RSI is coming back down. We can get a re-entry point. It's the oversold. So they're gonna and have to looking at the gold here. Yes, gold. Wait into our breakout zone again. And try to get wait for it to time until we get pull back out green luck. If it does, we'll go for a buy. If it breaks a trend line, we can get in on itself. Uh, still watching DAX as well, because still looking for this pullback on the German. Elaine, thank you. Forty. Always enjoy hearing from you, Elaine K. Mark there of Brookings. Tom Keen, you can see the RSI didn't break. <clears throat> if it breaks our average line, we're going down. You know, well, well, we, we want it ideally to get back to our zone here. Look, that's what we're looking for. It's some nice buys, more buys. Yeah, and then another re entry buy there, of course, as well. On the sell, we could have got a, um, a sell in on that price action there. And again, just for 100 points, easy. 71. There's quite a few trades there, just trading off the RSI you could have got when you're in a trend. It's nice and easy to follow. Uh, like I said, we are waiting for the sales to happen on DAX, so we'll keep an eye on that. Gold is ranging a little bit, as we'd expect. We're expecting this to drop in the open. I want it to push on up higher possible before the open. an hour to go that's ADP done four three four a nice nice result Traded the opposite way there's no Bank of England speech happening in about 30 minutes but like I said we're more focused on the RSM 61 obviously again it's the usual higher than expected be positive lower we're looking to go higher than last month so we want this to be you know 61.5 and above to, to take some buys uh on this and, and sells on gold that's that's the kind of plan
US, USD is going to range a little bit now, so I'm going to stick with gold. I'm about to get the buy in on gold. Then on gold, you lower your lot size when things are volatile like this at the moment as well. And I just kind of look for 50, 50, 50 points, 5 pips, my broker. Not going crazy. <laughs> Morrisai 58, see if it's going to push back to that 68. Don't touch our breakout zone again. Great, the higher it goes, the better. watching this wants to be the next Diane von Furstenberg what would you recommend be as true to yourself as you possibly can the more you could be you the happier you will be how will pricing have to adjust or not as a result of your greener ambitions we ran a big uh, survey around 32 countries more than 30,000 people took that you say there was a big gap in, in between people that were worried about climate and brilliant and um, we're done there on gold got two buys there on that gold uh, we've got 15 and 15 30 pounds about 45 dollars on that one there as you can see again i just went in on 0.5 Ago, 5434. That's an upside surprise. Your number on Friday, the median estimate of 548. Let's call it 550. Going into all of that, into the opening bout this morning, up 52 on the SP 500. Advanced. So, all you need, you see, hit that level there, perfect. Just so it bounce off there, got in 0 0.5, 50, 50 points. That'll do because I just I can measure the gap in where I entered. Oh, I could have got all 100, but yeah, I just want to see it bounce on that trend line. I want to see it break it before I take more buys. So, just played it safe. Nice little win. We get an important briefing here from Julia Coronado, founder and president of Macro Policy Perspectives. Of course, wonderful work at the Fed over the years. Waiting if it pushes high. I'm still anticipating gold going back to all this ground to make up you see here's my ultimate tp tp1 hit though here's the is the next one I'm looking at really tp3 now like at 1805 <clears throat> and this is going to depend on the ism report coming up we're going to see disinflation x quarters out does that come from that is curve shifting so hard touch double touch like you said and then down I was uh, just trying to re recorrect and come back up again, but I say it's all, the, all to do with the news. Nice if we can get back to 1805. Rejecting off that 1790. You know, especially in a tight labor market, the incentive got to break our break our zone. Here's our zone, looks quite tight, as you can see. Uh, and that would be productivity. Uh, the zones, so that's the zone. Definitely can Once price breaks out of either of these lines, then we're in the selling or you're buying. This cycle will, mm -hmm. will be better than last cycle. Uh, everything points to that. 
Um, so that that would be part of it. I think um, one of the things that Blanche Flower has been looking at, though, on a more negative light, has been the decline in consumer sentiment and whether that will right. weigh on spending. That would be a much more negative sort of demand decline in demand. Um, we haven't obviously seen that in the data. Consumer sentiment has fallen off for a couple of months. Um, well, Delta, inflation, et cetera, but consumers are but powering you, ahead and are reporting the best labor market they've seen in decades. But can you inform us on the arch fact that if we get productivity, we don't get wage growth? That is the, the great fear of those worried about high interest rates. Well, no, the thing with productivity is you can get wage growth, right? You can get, I mean, that's the story of the 90s. We had some of the strongest real wage growth, uh, which was just fine because uh, productivity was delivering that. So, you know, that, that's the that's the so, sort of what we're seeing in some of the, for example, the leisure and hospitality, the restaurants that are, you know, paying their workers more, but reducing their labor input and therefore you know, not having to raise their prices as much. That's the sweet spot, right? right. That workers can actually get raises. Uh, if there is sort of a shift in regime such that the labor market is tight enough and labor income can keep up, the labor share of GDP can, you know, not decline like it did last cycle, then workers can benefit from those productivity gains. And you can get that you know, that nirvana of moderate inflation pressures and good real wage growth and stronger top line well, growth how, and, and good profitability. How long can this nirvana uh, last if the wage growth is not keeping pace with consumer inflation? Well, that's right. I mean, that's, that's the, the problem of the last cycle uh, and actually the last two where consumer when wages didn't keep pace and the labor share of GDP fell and that I believe, in my view, contributed to some of the low inflationary pressures, the fragility of the cycle, uh, you know, the, the weak demand environment. You need broad-based, robust demand uh, to meet the Fed's kind of centered 2% target. If we go back to that old world where workers are, you know, gains from growth are very unevenly distributed, workers don't get their share, no, uh, so push then you can get back into that disinflationary the news bounce I mean, with the yeah, grab spiking Oof, people who want to sell on the news which is fine you can go that way but the massive direction is to the upside on the good news and confess to pull back on the open over the next couple of years what we could see is better productivity that could mean this breaks here we'll go back in for another buy our silo sees pulled rejected off it it's rejected Yeah. Uh, well, and, you know, so USD going the way of the news, you see. Got the sell. Big questions here, and that is that profit margins for US Oops, she goes. And obviously, we want to dip down and break. The open. So we we'll set that as our TP for the open. Reach it beforehand. You see uh, those consumer prices outpacing wage growth. How long can that last? I mean, is this basically what is occurring at a time when labor still doesn't have the same sort of order? 388 points. <clears throat> Question. I mean, what we're seeing in record profitability is that we're we're booming, right? Like again, the go big, go early macro strategy was Break that trend line. boom out of a recession. You don't Two minutes left. out of a recession. So we are booming. Uh, the economy is booming, profits are booming, wages are booming, demand is booming. Um, where do we settle down into? You know, do are firms able to match uh, you know, that the challenge of the tight labor market with productivity enhancing investments, if so, then they can maintain their margins even as top line growth pools. Um, we're not going to see probably wages continue to be rising at, you know, 5% annualized pace next year. But do they cool the thing that still keeps pace with um, yeah. prices and, and, and allows them to continue spending at a, at a healthy pace? Um, you know, I think, again, uh, what we're hearing from companies is that they are actively investing into this and trying to meet these challenges. Um, 
-hmm. So, you know, we'll see, you know, we've seen a lot of resiliency uh, and I think, you know, most people are forecasting a pretty darn good year next year as well. Are we going to see savings used? I mean, I'm totally confused, Julie. I'm truly confused, folks, on the idea of what is the savings and how will it be used at the margin? Right. What do you say? Right. I mean, that's a huge source of uncertainty, and I don't love the term excess savings because it sort of presumes that the prior level of savings was optimal in some sense, and we know that the distribution of income and wealth was so unequal uh, that many households, in fact, a majority of households didn't even have you know, a minimum of precautionary savings. So we don't really know. Now, that, now a lot more households do have cash on hand, uh, and how much do they hold on to? How much do they spend? We've yeah. seen the saving rate return to pre-COVID levels, uh, but that still leaves a chunk of money on, you know, in, in reserve. And we just don't know how much consumers will dip into that and exhaust it. Yeah. Um, we we do know that again, you know, that, that we're not going to get the the repeat of the fiscal support that delivered that cash. So at a minimum, households are going to be making decisions very differently from here forward based on their expectations for labor income, whether or not they, how much they dip into that cash reserve. Well, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the growth impulse uh, this year, but sort of going forward, we're looking at a more organic growth momentum. The baton is being passed back from policy support to private sector momentum. Julia, have we learned from Fed Chair Jay Powell yesterday in his testimony that inflation is now a more important mandate than employment for the Federal Reserve? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the way he will describe it uh, and the way he described it yesterday and we'll elaborate on it at the December meeting is that actually they may not be seeing a conflict in their mandates, that the labor market, I mean, if we're adding half a million jobs a month, we're going to get to full employment pretty darn quick. Uh, so it may be that, you know, they just, one thing that they've learned from the October round of data is that, yes, inflation be, you know, surprised again to the upside, but so did jobs and so did consumer spending. And so the overall picture is, again, that of a boom. They don't need to be as supportive. They need to appropriately recalibrate policy, and that means speeding up tapering and probably bringing forward rate hikes. Julia, always great to hear from you. Thanks for being with us. Julia Coronado there of Macro My Policy pleasure. Perspectives. The words of the Federal Reserve Chairman, at this point, the economy is very strong and inflationary <laughs> pressures are high. It is therefore appropriate in my view to consider wrapping up the taper of our asset purchases perhaps a few months sooner. That will be the conversation, Tom, for two, two weeks today at the Federal Reserve. Now, Paul Asher's Capital Economics, he says ADP says faster taper. I mean, that's just the And then on to payrolls, Tom. Yep, on to payrolls, and, you know, that's where we are. I mean, it's, uh, you know, John, I, I'm not really focusing well because today Lisa had a nailed it and a great question and you nailed it to nothing. She wins like, every like, morning. Brando wins like every morning, even, it's Tom. Like, like we, why are we here? It's if looking we, around corners. If we took scores, we'd lose every morning, I Tom. Mean, you know I mean, that. It's just like, it's like I give up. I give you Ramo a point. looking no. around corners. Yeah. The downside John, risk. can you just say once to me, like, Tom, you nailed it. You nailed I mean, it, Tom. Thank you. Okay. We said better. that. We said that about chicken. That was nailing That it. was just fantastic. You, Brilliant. Chicken, you threw a damn chicken at me. You were so upset about it. <laughs> Speaking to the congressman from Ireland. Yeah, say, see if this breaks now. 58 on the S&T. It's 38. I know it is. Up by more than 1%. I remember looking at it. The first time I saw Tyson's chicken, it's yellow. It was yellow. And that was their marketing gimmick. Lisa Shannon and Morgan Stanley's going to Dax <laughs> still continuing his climb up. No correction yet. <clears throat> so again, many looking for cells on this really once it um, uh, flat average RSI line. When's the book? The book comes out for Christmas. Oh really? Yeah. What's the title? Yeah, it draw does. Down, draw down draw meditation. Down meditation. What's the subtitle? We haven't got there yet. We're just working on a Lisa, final Lisa, he sold the movie rights from Capri. <laughs> Who plays John? Who plays John? Me. I'm playing myself. All right. Look yeah. for it. Theater's near you. It's like Stallone in Rocky. <laughs> he wanted to play himself. <laughs> oh, boy. The tale of a hero. Hmm. Was it in Philadelphia or something, right? Equity's up by 1% from New York. I'm going. This is Bloomberg. <laughs> I'm pushing nicely. With the first word news, I'm Rishka Gupta at the U.S. Supreme Court today. It's the most.
consequential abortion case in a generation. Justices will listen to arguments on Mississippi's ban on abortion after 15 weeks and consider getting the landmark Roe versus Wade. Down to see if that fills the wick again. And US 30, same look. It's going to push. There's a nice little flash in and out sales if you can get them. The recently detected coronavirus strain. Meanwhile, President Biden is expected to announce new pre boarding testing requirement for all travelers to the US, and Japanese airlines have halted new inbound bookings for this month. In Turkey, the central bank is struggling to shore up the lira. It's the bank's first intervention in foreign exchange markets in seven years. The lira has been in free fall since President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Here we go, we just did all trades there while talking. Uh, we've got 15 and 15, 30 pounds, 45 dollars on US 30. We've got 18 and 8, 26, so about 35 dollars on gold. Just on that, so we've got about 100 dollars there in what 30 seconds. Four trades again, I'm only using three lots and 0 0.5 on gold, not risking anything major on these moves. So you get in on the scalping. Again, just saw the wick down, got in, got out. Simple as between that gap and that, that was it. Got in, got out. 50 points. Perfect. We're a spread. No messing around. Quick hundred dollars then about what twenty seconds? Um, we'll go again if this breaks. Watching the RSI 60A really wanted to hit that over. <clears throat> Never bought zone would be nice and we can get in again. when your shares are down 20 percent it's gonna hurt but talk to us about well really what you're seeing what take us more forward looking are you worried about people exiting pandemic era and going back to the gym or, or are we going to work out at home more well that's actually um the advantage that beachbody has is we have never been uh a drink again just dip down a little bit hit that 68 look there you go back down again expect bounced off our trend line and haven't made that choice yet our job is to influence them with great content and this combination of what we call the total solution we can measure that nutrition and community so that they can tap into this incredible potential 50 points again that is entertaining and engaging right at home so that they get cross action That's our job is to help the new person engage in healthy lifestyle let's be sat on this line sat on that support this is our breakout zone i told you any commentary about trade we us 30 pushing up nicely that is now being reversed people are talking about bloomberg surveillance there's some guy out on twitter who says i look like i'm on i know i noticed that do you think I need a lift? Is it time what that I... say about me? What, what particular gentleman say about... Let's have a look. Oh, one of Lord. them is near 101 years old. Which one would that be? The other has an ego in the orbit of Mars. <laughs> Who's that? I have no idea. This is Lisa, the only chance of productive conversation. The eyes or should I do the whole thing? When you put the garbage inside, there's a little sensor that detects the garbage and speaks out. Um, and this is one of the initiatives that we have created here. We, as the residents of this neighborhood, a bunch of neighbors that have come together. Yeah, so quite to today, we're on 16 trades today so far. 16, <coughs> including uh, a couple carried over from the Asian session as well. So yeah, just because it's a it's a dangerous moment at the moment, the market at the moment with all the COVID news and everything. So we're just. 
scalping we're going to tap out here like two times again is it going to break and go to our top tp here three four three four eight four seven and just reject it off it look or a side again the eight gold rejected off that lot back into the 52s <clears throat> back into the cell into the neutral zone so again we're just holding off again and it is very powerful and i'm a big believer in it it comes red then we're going to sell we should get a rejection off our flat kg line here look it didn't quite break it was a false breakout from the zone needed to break the trend line wrapped in that range we'll scalp it but you just got to be careful and be in and out and like i say lower your lot size and there we are with Robin Hayes of JetBlue, the chief executive. 45 minutes to go. For all of us, and particularly as travel picks up, domestically travel picks up worldwide. We're staggering here on Bloomberg surveillance, and particularly with our aviation coverage, from story to story. Guy Johnson has led our coverage on airlines, on jets, on the transatlantic, on the global, and joins us now. And Guy, I do understand that with our wonderful guests, the key question is the new Manchester United and how they'll do with Arsenal this weekend. But other than that, it's getting the planes in the air. Tom, I think that's going to be a critical question for Sean Weiss. Weiss. Yeah, let, we'll, we, can, we can start on the football. I, Arsenal, Manchester United, that's what Tom wants to know about. Are we, are we yeah. yeah. <laughs> Arsenal, of course. Okay. We have an answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's talk about what, what else is going on now, now that we've, we've cleared that one up. Absolutely. Um, Omicron. Omicron. Hard yeah. to say. What impact is it having on the business? Well, I'm just reminded that we met 23 days ago outside yeah. of uh, Terminal 3 in Heathrow for a historic day of opening up the... Um, Corridor, corridor between the UK, UK and the US joint synchronized takeoff yep. and here we are 23 days later and we have a new variant um, I think it's early days on this one mm -hmm. my intuition tells me that it is probably more transmissible maybe not as severe just based on the patterns this just didn't emerge four or five days ago it probably emerged a few weeks ago possibly in October um, We've changed, adapted. Of course, South Africa is shut down, although there is a flight right now in the air from South Africa back to the UK. So people need to quarantine. So we'll, we'll deal with it. You know, this industry has shown resiliency, and so are we. The governments have reacted much more quickly this time. A, has that surprised you? B, is that the right or wrong thing to do? It hasn't surprised me, and I think it's the wrong thing to do uh, in the sense that travel is so omnipresent in our lives and if you can you know kind of put comb a combination of politics and pandemic airlines is the easy target for changing of signals to the public so i wasn't surprised i think we should evaluate the situation quickly and what i'm telling my team and telling the government in the uk is as quickly as you introduce those measures if things turn out that they are not as significant, take them back immediately as well. well. Testing, opening of borders, removal of, uh, of red uh, list countries. Do you, do you worry at all that the North Atlantic may be shut down again? I am not that concerned, concerned about, about that. Based on, on the comments that President Biden made a few days ago, which in, in my mind were the most calm of the political leaders out there. Let's look at the information. This should be data driven. And then we make the calls and travel is not the way to stop a pandemic this variant is now everywhere in the world everybody understands that so shutting borders hurts thousands and millions of people uh, of course over the festive period but businesses and gdp is reliant on it and we need every single uh, piece of help that we can get and travel enables that what has what has the north atlantic looked like since november the 8th um what kind of load factors have you been experiencing what does pricing look like what does pricing look like around the holidays? Today. Has business mm -hmm. travel? Just give me a kind of a, a data dump as to kind of what it has looked like since, since then. then. And I will try and be organized in my uh, comments on the data dump. Um, um, so first, post the 8th, 
Tremendous bookings across the Atlantic, um, and we've seen Bulge Sea bounced again nicely. In, in December, uh, and we will push on up again, I would suggest. Anyway, 60 to 70 percent load factors on the week post the AA, you couldn't get a seat on a Virgin Atlantic from London to the US. The variant has changed a bit, but I think we're neutral in the December period. So uh, new bookings are offsetting cancellations, and there have been cancellations. Of course, people want to do that. But for Easter and, uh, and the summer, we're still building momentum and still building load factors. Um, and if you US 30 is going to dip down a little bit. January load factor is trailing quite nicely, anywhere in the 60 to 70 percent. Could be nice. Up to 80 percent. So overall, I would say very good response to the opening of the borders. The um, Omicron, of course, a dampening effect, but not enough as a long. 50 is not really much, but what you want. Neutral at this point. What are the state of the finance? What, the state, what is the state of your finances at the moment? Micro scalping. Yes. Um, there is a suggestion that maybe you're in talks again with the shareholders to raise some more money. Can you confirm or deny that? Are you comfortable in terms of where you are with, with the balance sheet right now? There was talk of an IPO. I, I, you haven't con you've never confirmed that to me. It is, is, is there still talk of an IPO? Is if there I, I push that so neutral all, I'll start with the important things. We were trailing ahead of our See if gold pushes up to our seventeen ninety. The month of November. Just, uh, so we have a cushion. Yeah. Any yeah. airline executive is thinking about their capital structure and raising yeah. capital. We are never short of needing more capital. All options remain on the table and we are exploring them um, robustly, but I am very confident that Virgin Atlantic will have a very good balance sheet going into the recovery phase that really starts in December and on to the summer of 2022. Arsenal by how many? Versus Manchester United? Yeah. I'm going for a win 2-1. 2-1. One. One. A Tom surprise win. Surprise win 2-1 two two. One, Arsenal over Manchester United. Shai Weiss, the CEO of Virgin Atlantic, has spoken, Tom. Back to you. Uh, Guy Johnson, thanks so much. Of course, man, you was so much change going on uh, right now. We're going to look at the markets now and change over to claims tomorrow and then onto the jobs report. But Lisa Abramowitz, before that, we see this so important ISM statistic. I'm not a big believer in ISM. ISM. This time around, Lisa, I'm wrong. It's a big deal. What we have seen consistently throughout the ISM manufacturing surveys around the world is some sort of feeling, feeling of, of reparation. There is a repair going on. I like uh, that. And I think that we are seeing supply chains perhaps see the worst Four. of what they have experienced. However, you are still seeing a lot, a lot of complaints. And this is where I think the headline, headline number is going to be interesting. But, but diving underneath, underneath that to the, the commentary, will be even more so. How, How much, much is this in manufacturing factory. picking up despite the disruptions, not because of an easing in them? A sustained equity is the arc of the show this morning. Dow futures up 331 points. Uh, SPX up 56 points. And the VIX really in, 23.76, Lisa, on the VIX. I mean, the angst out there is like a 28 or a 30 VIX, and we're just not there. What really strikes me uh, from the past, I guess, week and a half is, frankly, how much people are being whipsawed and the oh. idea of risk management and the idea that the moves that we're seeing in the market isn't necessarily conviction, but rather uh, shifting around yeah. rapidly at, at a time when they've already had an amazing year. Risk management strategies yeah. seem to be ruling at least some of the price action. Oh, cool. My, re my uh, perspective of the last two weeks is how much time Lisa Bramwitz has taken off. It was oh, good to have oh, her back today Thanks. I appreciate with that. us as well. Lisa Bramwitz and Tom Keen, John Fair will be here tomorrow and then on to the jobs report on Friday. First of at 10 a.m. this morning after. Instead of working alone, don't we have a better chance of solving all the world's biggest challenges when we work together? At Savic, we believe the chemistry between people is the chemistry that matters. Savic. Yeah, let's wait on gold. So a lot. Did we get that? Yes, we did. There we go. So we just got another two. You can buy us on gold there, they hit 18 18, 36, about $50 there.
TP there and then waiting on the US 30. <clears throat> about US 30s it's going to go back up again on the open We've got 30 minutes you've got this little boost in three minutes time 30 minutes before the open you always get some kind of nice action we'll see it's good to watch this live Tax is the big one's going to collect. Still buying, look at that, still buying. Another re entry. Again, you've got the bounce off here, look. It didn't. All these divergence, five candles, and up she goes. Perfect again, the indicators work so well. <clears throat> and you could have got in again on here. And again, even with that gap there, there's enough to flash in and out. Points in the spread. So these are all the trades you could have taken on the buy on DAX so far. Still waiting for this drop. Out of traditional roles to become chief future US 30. This week, find out if it's going to pull back to our base sign, we're just going to phase that. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Chief Future Officer, brought to you by Workday, Wednesday on Bloomberg. Every Friday with 30 minutes dedicated to fixed income. I'm Jonathan Farrow. This is Bloomberg Real Yield. Looking for a bounce this morning from New York City for our audience worldwide. Good morning. Good morning. Your equity market up by 55, advancing by more than 1%. The countdown to the open starts right now. Countdown to the open. All we want. I want USC just to pull back a little bit more before it bounces up. Give us a nice big gap to that TP on the top level. Live from New York City, we begin with the big issue questioning the Fed put. I don't think it's very durable at all. The Fed put should be questioned when you have inflation. We had high inflation. The high levels of inflation that we've talked about a lot. The, the, the Fed has only just started talking about inflation. Mm -hmm. This is a complicating factor. The path isn't quite so clear. The price action is very it's messy. messy. It's clear yeah. that central bankers want to uh, remove accommodation. The Fed really is in a position now no, where they, they can, can you know, accelerate the taper. Any step back from the, the current oh. policy path it's really going to be scrutinized. There's not a lot of wiggle room. You have the problem of inflation. I'm not convinced that there is this quote unquote put. There's a broader uncertainty issue at play for both Jay Powell, the Fed, and indeed for us as uh, investors. Joining us now to discuss is Morgan Stanley's Lisa Shallot, Academy's Peter Cheer, and Keith Lerner of Truist. Lisa, Lisa, what does it say about this market that we're two, three percent from all time highs and we're having this conversation about questioning the Fed put? Look, I, I think what it says is that by and large, the market still has unbelievable faith uh, that, uh, you know, the Fed is basically committed, uh, you know, to uh, a very go slow type strategy uh, and that there's still a lot of individual investor money on the sidelines. And so, you know, we're seeing this seesawing action uh, despite uh, some of the more hawkish comments from the Fed. 
uh, because I think some of these less experienced investors are still addicted to this buy the dip mentality. And so we're seesawing here uh, between, uh, you know, the less sophisticated money and institutional money. Have we got a challenge for that buy the dip mentality? Peter Chia, you started this from the weekend coming into this trading week. You wrote, for the first time, we faced a sell-off where it's unclear what the Fed will do. There is no guarantee of easy money going forward. The path seems to be fewer bond purchases and even rate hikes across the globe. That changes the buy the dip functionality. To what degree is that true, Pete? I think it's largely true. I think today it's the start of the month. So you've got a lot of factors that affect trading on the first day of the month. I think as the realization hits that the Fed is definitely going to taper faster and may even start hiking, it's going to take some support out of this market. And yesterday's reaction when the long end started trading the lower yields because of the hikes, that's not good for the economy if the Fed hikes quickly and slows down. So I think we're going to have to digest this. I think it's going to take a few days, maybe a couple of weeks for that mentality to sink in and that it's real. So I think a lot of people are hoping maybe Powell backtracks. I don't think he will. When you think to December 2018, Pete, and you think back to the backdrop then where inflation was in at around two, it's in at around six right now. Is that the game changer for you, Peter Chip? Yeah, I think inflation's here. He's having to change. And then again, just like December of 2018, we're going into a period of very thin liquidity. So moves get overemphasized, right? We get bigger moves than we should in both directions. So I think the market's susceptible to a fairly quick pullback in the coming days and weeks. Keith Lerner, your reaction, sir? Well, first, Sean, I'm good to be with you. Um, I think we, if you think about it from the, the, the Fed's perspective, we have been averaging um, over 600,000 jobs the last six months. We had a good ADP report today. Inflation is high, as you mentioned. The Atlanta GDP now is around 8%. And if you give all that out there, it would make sense to pull back some of the stimulus. And we are, even when you're tapering, you're still providing stimulus. So I think it makes, makes sense. sense. But I also think this affords them maximum flexibility. There's still a lot of uncertainties around the variant. I think if the variant becomes more problematic, right. you'll see a different tone in their message, just like we saw so a different, different tone in the message the last, last month from, from the Fed. And the last point is, anytime you have a transition with the Fed and the market, you have tend to have a hiccup. But when we look at what happened last Friday with the VIX spiking above 50%, when you look one year forward, the market has been up 18 out of 19 times. So we still think the primary right. trend is higher, even more the market is going to be choppy. Something you just you said, said yeah, building in flexibility. There is a difference between building in flexibility and charting a clear path directly towards rate hikes. We'll so see if we're going to go. Yeah, 55. <coughs> 54. Flashing in and out on the sell. 25 minutes before the open. Gold's now ranging, so we're going to leave that alone because we're expecting the drop on the open. We want. And that sparked the gap lower. Lisa Shallow, I want to understand from your perspective are we setting the stage now, charting a path towards rate hikes, or building in what Keith Lerner just said flexibility for what might come down the road? So I, I'm in the flexibility camp uh, as well. Look, I, you know, I think. Uh, you know, Powell has has been, see uh, back's yeah, break in this zone, heavy resistance. Exactly what he was doing. If this is going on, uh, you know, looking, uh, yeah, look, you know, open possibly. Even though I want to pull back because I love trading them. Until and this is what we could be looking at for the open. Uh, now here we are. We want to DAX and for US 30, obviously, again, same thing. We're looking for this to push up again. So, um, I'm just going to see if it's going to clip. TP on the sell here. There was absolutely no new data. Ranging around. Uh, but going to get into that neutral uh, you know, And I find it tough to break uh, over the last 10 days on that line here. And so, you know, this is this is Powell building in some flexibility, uh, you know, getting a little bit more uh, hawkish so that, uh, you know, he can he can go either way now, depending, particularly depending on what happens with this variant. At least this is really difficult to answer. But the one data point we have had over the last week is that he got nominated for a second term at the Federal Reserve. Do you think clearing that hate hurdle, given the audience he was speaking to yesterday, was that a factor in any of this from your perspective, your standpoint? Yes, 100 percent. You know, like I said, I, I, I think uh, Jay Powell has been um, politically astute. Uh, all the way along, uh, and I think he absolutely, uh, you know, was calculating uh, this entire move. You wonder how much signal then we should take from that, Lisa? How much signal should we take from that if this was driven somewhat by the politics? Absolutely none. That's that's my point. Is is that 
Uh, I, I'm not in the camp that, you know, suddenly, you know, he's, he's really more hawkish and we're suddenly going to have three hikes in, in 2022. I just don't buy that. Peter Chair, do you buy that? Sadly, I actually do buy that. I think this has become political hot potato, right? Inflation is on, you know, Biden's lips every other day. Inflation has become some sort of, you know, political issue. So I think he's probably under a lot more pressure than he would be under normal circumstances. And I think that's a factor in why he's changing his message. It ties in with everything. All slowed down. Plus just saying, 55. It's going to get down to 50. Behaving post renovation. But I think it's real yeah. that the inflation fear hanging on the local levels. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more pressure on the Yeah, the market is going to slow up. That, and that's got to work its way through the markets. This is when we've got a communication problem, when you can't draw a distinction between the signal and the noise. What does it mean for next year? Here's Deutsche Bank's call. Let's start there. We have moved lift off from July to June, an incremental move, and continue to anticipate that the Fed will raise rates at a quarterly pace, pausing in Q3 23 to begin a passive rundown of the balance sheet. This path would be consistent with three hikes in 22, three in 23, two in 24. Nice glide path there from Deutsche Bank. So we've got one view on either side of the debate right now, Keith Lerner, one from Lisa, one from Pete. Where do you come down on it? Probably somewhere in the middle, Jonathan. You know, I think this market has somewhat of uh, short termism. You know, we you know, think about how much this has evolved as far as what people thought about what the Fed's going to do just the last couple of months. Now, let's think about six months forward. Six months forward, back to 758. We're to see some of these inflation readings at least come down from elevated levels. Uh, so that will give them a little bit more, you know, flexibility. And also, the, the economy... Yeah, we we see a push up and a bounce down. The and economy starts to slow down somewhat from these elevated levels. And if we do get a movement more from goods to services, uh, we should also see... And then we've got the 35 minutes. And we've got the market manufacturing PMI, the first one. And then we've got the ISM after the, what, the oil. But three more news, including the open to trade yet. <laughs> 59 as we know higher than expected we want it to be six day continuation of a buy 59.1 so it was bang on expected last month a value of 50 implies nothing has changed you see high inspected it's all here all the information you need to be able to trade the fundamentals that's where we're going to see growth. We're going to see more and more supply chain build out domestically. And we've got this coming up 15 minutes after the open. Do the open first. So you can stick with gold if you want to trade that or US third. I you know, redomesticize our economy. That's what's going to benefit the most. So Lee, let me put the same question to you. We know there's daylight on the Fed call between you and Pete. Is the daylight on the investment, the allocation process too? I, I, I don't know that I would say that there's profound difference. I said I think what I would say is, look, you know, our perspective is that the Fed, uh, you know, it's not politically correct for the Fed to come out and say we actually want inflation in this economy. But I fundamentally believe the Fed wants inflation in this economy. They've been fighting deflation or disinflation for the past 13 years, and they're going to go slow. Uh, as a result, you know, we think that, uh, you know, the pathway for cyclical stocks uh, and for a gradual rise in nominal rates as well as real rates uh, is very, very strong. And so we like the CapEx call. We like the cyclical call. We like financials, industrials, energy, uh, you know, some of the name mining materials that, that we've been talking about. And we think the runway for those names, it may be longer uh, than the bond market is is currently signaling the cyclicals financials industrials energy you were saying he just pushing back down again well first thing jonathan i think you know we've been on this show and very positive um over the last 20 months and we're we're still positive next year but we're realistic that what's happening with the fed what's happening with this covid trend few minutes to go you know a bit more volatility and and obviously expect some more modest gains as far as sector position and we think more of a barbell approach makes sense uh, earlier in November, we upgraded technology after being neutral. It broke out of a, uh, out of a one-year relative price range. And we think when people get concerned about COVID, they'll go back to tech. But we're pairing that with financials and energy as overweights as well. And because we, we do think the economy is still on solid footing. And I think it's important that the Fed isn't the only thing that's important for the market. Earnings have been the entire, have accounted for the entire gains this year. And markets, if you look at history, have risen <coughs> that has raised rates at a more modest pace. Margins have been tremendous, as you've pointed out before, and many others have as well. Keith Lerner, Peter Cheer, Lisa Shallow. Great, just entered 53. This is nice. Fresh uncertainty about the outlook. Nice little pullback. 
Obviously, there's a bit of a question mark that has been created around the new variant. I think that over the coming days and weeks, if people get more comfort that the vaccine works, the vaccine's going to hold. Uh, I think you know we'll we'll just uh, we'll keep moving through it, and uh, we shouldn't see too much of an impact to demand. That conversation coming up next from New York. This. Brilliant. There we go. Just got out of that. We've got £22 there, which is about $30, $30. There you go. We just nipped in there just for a two quick little cells. 0.3 or three lots on mine. There is going to be a price war, as you say. So, the fares are available now. They may not be there for, a, for, for forever. forever. But nevertheless, talk to you about what the competitive landscape is going to look like here. We've seen a bit of a departure in this market, and this market has three very ventures that compete head to head daily uh, to win the hearts and minds of consumers and businesses in the United Kingdom. So I, I don't see a difference in uh, the competition. I think we've all focused on Heathrow and the major hub in the United Kingdom. So we're look, going to be looking for, like I said, we're going to be looking for take buys on the open. We're steady with the good news and sells on hold. But in the actual way, the news should have done in the first place. But obviously, we know before the market is open, we have the manipulation that we trade. In 18 points, we're looking for maybe down to our KG line here zone here look we can focus on and then on the US 30 we're going to be looking for back to here and that. Mobility. So we have a switch there, and really, uh, we're going to step by step electrify everything. And what does that mean? I'll be putting you over a detailed strategy outline how we're going to fight COVID this winter. Not in shutdowns, but lockdowns. But with more widespread vaccinations, boosters, testing, and more. That was the president on Monday. Fast forward 48 hours, the Washington Post reporting the following. The Biden administration is preparing stricter testing requirements for all travelers entering the U.S., requiring everyone to be tested one day before boarding flights, regardless of vaccination status or country of departure. We will hear from the president tomorrow. For more. Joe, what else are we expecting to hear from the president tomorrow on this? It's a great question because it looks like the administration is really building the plane in flight here, Jonathan. I don't know if I should use that expression. Yep, so again, if the news is pre-market, that's before the opens of any major session, Asian, London, New York, trading US 30 and gold, we're going the opposite to what we should be because we're collecting the stop loss hunting, the liquidity grab, the manipulation, we're trading it. So yes, news, if news is good, US 30 goes up, which the time gold goes down the opposite way. Same as if you're trading under the dollar pairs. But pre-market, we now know we get this where gold will go with the news against and like us 30 as we saw took the drop the good news us city dropped but on the open it should rise yes we did get a rise but you'd have already closed out your trade if you'd entered a buy here right like saying you'd held for this but you might not so go the anti you know the anti way manipulation way should be saying <clears throat> pre-market because we're obviously we're not open yet and that's what happens we get we've noticed this time after time after time now that unless you've got a big account you can hold and get it in the end but why why wait when you can go the opposite way and collect those pips so us the gold mostly goes with the news before a session's open or 
before we learn more, maybe there's um, going to be a new formulation. US is open. It was US news. If it'd been British news, then it might have gone the opposite way, but it was US news. So that's why. Trade in the manipulation. We've got to wait and they're looking to act. Joe, it's great to catch up as always. Our Washington correspondent, look for Joe on Bloomberg Radio. Sound on. 5 p.m. weekdays, Monday to Friday. Looking for now we're going to be looking for sales on on, US, on gold and buys on US 30. 10 minutes to go. Your favorite place in this equity market. Then we've got the news. Has this conversation shaped that in any way whatsoever? Well, look, you know, obviously we went through this, you know, back in the August, September time frame uh, where, you know, to the extent that we have slowdowns in the supply chain, we also... Uh, you know, may have a slowdown in demand, uh, but those are just, you know, as far as we're concerned, we think that until we know more, those are things that we can look through, uh, because as we know, you know, th those things kind of cured pretty quick, even though, you know, the human damage was there. It's a guessing game, Keith. That's all it is, a guessing game again. And outside of the virus and the data attached to it, you've got to guess how policymakers respond. You've got to guess how the consumer responds. Have you got an educated guess on both right now, Keith? Well, Jonathan, we always work in an uncertain world. It's always about relative opportunity. To Lisa's point, you know, some of the cyclicals are trading at, you know, a 20-year low relative to the market. So that's why, why, you know, some of this is being in discounted. But I do think that as we look back over the last few years during this pandemic, the one thing that we can be confident about is consumers, corporations, they've adapted. And I mentioned those record profits before also. So I think people should have a little bit of optimism that we will adapt no matter what happens with this latest variant and we will move forward. And that's the lesson that we've learned over the last two years. I think we've identified that optimism every time we get a bounce. We've got another bounce this morning. The things we don't know, transmissibility, still not got a great idea on that. We've got to wait on severity of disease. Got an early picture of that, but not a full picture. We've got to wait. On vaccine efficacy, you've heard of that. Yep. But there's some skepticism around those comments. They've got skin in the game. Again, they admit themselves. We've got to wait for the data. So as a portfolio manager right now, an investor, what do you do? This is what RBC's Laurie Cavas said. All right, so look at that. Beautiful. People say it's hurt. Take a listen. US 30. We did a survey is it going to bounce off our KG or is it going to break? Spoke, and we found that most people in our survey said they're going to be in their portfolio. At the buys. Look at that. We're in this information vacuum while we're trying to figure out exactly where this virus is headed, this variant is headed. I think investors are going to not go back into defensives. They're going to stick with tech, consumer discretionary, and those sorts of things. Peter Chair, the words of Laurie Cavasida of RBC there. We found that most people aren't doing anything with their portfolios yet. They need more information. Do you agree, sir? Are you doing the same thing? RSI on DAX. No, Seven again. Is it the start? Companies that benefit from work from home a little bit, because I think we might see a little bit of sl sliding back on that, because it's the winter anyways. People don't want to do the commute. But as a whole, I'm fairly Good. comfortable with our ability to deal with you know, the We're going to get the push up first, though, I still think. On the open, about eight minutes to go to enter trades. Really didn't affect the younger people that badly anyway. So the, the fear sometimes, I think, continues to get overblown. So, yes, this is bad. And again, you don't want to be in certain risk categories. But as a whole, we've already learned to deal with it. I think more and more people accept that, yes, it's dangerous, but it's not as dangerous for an average 35 year old person as you know it, it was laid out to be so i think we're going to move through this we're going to continue to travel we're going to continue to do a lot as long as the government stays out of the way we'll have a decent and healthy economy <laughs> well pete that's a big caveat there a big asterisk next to everything you've just said so long as the government stays out of the way we know from experience the u.s regardless of who's running the government responds to this very differently compared to say continental europe and compared to say china does that shape your approach to markets? How, say, the Chinese might deal with this, the Chinese Communist Party? It's how the US government might deal with it. Yes, it's putting me on hold from buying EM, which I think actually looks attractive. It's putting me on hold from buying European stocks. I really want to own EM in Europe, but until we see how they react to this variant, because they do tend to be a little bit more draconian, I can't get comfortable saying bye to those. The second it looks like Europe will not muck things up, I want to buy European stocks and I want to get into EM. Lisa, do you feel the same way about the international makeup of, say, a portfolio right now? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, that's where we see the opportunities, certainly on a relative valuation basis and, and in terms of the runway uh, for corporate profit. Five minutes to go, six minutes till we enter some trades. You know, the <clears throat> 22 minutes to the marketing manufacturing PMI. 
a little bit of a of a mismatch between investing.com pricing power and and revenues uh and actually accounting for for what we think are going to be rising costs so we're in the camp that says you know added 534 new jobs in december november is what you're saying yeah and maximum uh profit margins therefore and and where there are still margin opportunities around the global recovery uh is That's the main kind of news less. i mean i think one thing where i would uh maybe differ from my colleagues is is on china i do think uh that we might see uh somewhat of a more mild response uh from the chinese government given the fact uh that they the the actions that they have taken the absolute zero tolerance have created unbelievable supply chain problems but have also weakened growth in their own economy at a time when they're pursuing uh you know, 30 shaping up good their, their reform programs around around uh you know economic equality um so i i think we might see a different and and more modest approach to china as they uh also quote unquote learn to live with it alisa shannon peter chair keith learner sticking with us we'll build more on this china conversation in just a moment here in the united states we're still up on the year on the s p 500 by 21.6 percent coming into wednesday's session Coming up, the morning calls and later, traders facing an uncertain December, volatility surging amid fresh... Instead of working alone, don't we have a better chance of solving all the world's biggest challenges when we work together? At Savic, we believe the chemistry between people is the chemistry that matters. Savic. true. You can see price action right on our baseline, just holding on their support. The RSI has now popped back, supported it. That's quite nice. And if we've got enough room to get 100, 150, 200. Hope everything holds where it is exactly now. Look, gold will reject off that line and down. Again, 100, 120 points potential. It goes wrong, obviously, you know, where your levels are, you end the trade and you go backwards, go counter. You know? um, that's how we do it. said they didn't have any fuel. 21% said that they had one fuel type or another, so that's either petrol or petrol. And 52% said that they uh, were fully stocked. Uh, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland seem to be okay. So we still are seeing, like your reporters are seeing, some stockouts at sites around London and the southeast, I'm afraid. When do you feel confident that this will 100% be in the rearview mirror? About three, four minutes. Those people that got fuel uh, over the last <coughs> before we... Uh, uh, ...again for another few days, and that will give us a chance to actually start to restock the network. So we're trying to get it back to a reasonable level uh, to today and tomorrow, uh, and then over the coming weeks, because uh, it will take a number of weeks, uh, to get it back to the uh, the sort of normal, more normal running levels. The October jobs report beat expectations for job creation. We're experiencing the strongest economic recovery in the world. Will we get another great jobs report for the holidays? Find out Friday on Bloomberg Television. Jobs report, yes, NFP. Let's see. I'm going all in on gold with everything we've won this week. <clears throat> That's the way to do it. <laughs> okay, got four minutes to go to the open. Minutes away from the open and in New York this Let's have a look at the good morning directly market a lift up one percent on the s p 500 on the Russell up futures looking up on the stack up by 1.2 percent that's the story in the equity market switch on the board and get to the bond market a focus on the front end again chairman Powell waking back up that rate hike conversation yields are higher there by two basis points just short of 60 still short of the 65 we were at last week want to watch still anchored going into chairman Powell's testimony and then waking up again that's the story in the bond market here are your morning calls first up goldman downgrading dr horton to neutral forecasting limited upside with near-term tailwinds reflected in the stock's valuation cowan naming general dynamics one of its best ideas the analyst seeing a number of catalysts potentially fueling earnings growth of up to 10 percent and finally bet upgrading capital one to neutral highlighting the stock's appealing valuation with shares underperforming throughout the second half of the year that stock is up by 2.9 percent Coming up, China's big tech crackdown looking far from over. More on that conversation coming up. Your opening bell is next. From New York, this is Bloomberg.
Couple of minutes to go. Let's see if we can have a nice clean sweep. Scalps today. Sold, which is nice. When you put the okay, we're in. Let's see what we're going to. Let's see what we can uh, achieve on this. residents of this neighborhood a bunch of neighbors that have come to the market to, to open now the fact that our neighborhood is dirty we want to make a difference we want to to have a clean clean streets that look nice and are nice to walk in good stuff oh i've just closed it already what do you want on gold before the open so that's good enough for me out a minute before, just took two hundred dollars there. What do we get? Yeah, got three positions 40, 40, 40. We got two hundred dollars there, so there's no need to mess around. Going back in again, bank 0 0.5 lots. That was all. Already done that. Gold's already sold, already done. Hit TP, that's fine. Let's now wait for US 30. Hard to put your head around any narrative. Let's just be honest. We've had sort of a shift in. Are we in some sort of cycle? And there uh, we're done. Moment. People were talking about that all day. Okay, everybody, okay. done in one minute thirty seconds, and we closed four positions on US thirty, and that was a thirty, 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 another two hundred dollars. At least it's not boring. That's all I can say. It's a messy end to the year. It's really the final All done. Futures up fifty-five, up by one point two percent on the Perfect, that's what I wanted. We entered here, we caught that spike up, and there you go. 250 points, I got out at 100. There you go, that's all I need. Now it's manipulation down, so what? Doesn't matter about that, I've already got my win. I'll wait for it to pop back and we'll take more buys again because I know this is going to rise so we'll just wait for this to play out but we got the open we entered one minute before the open that's the way to do it and if you entered a buy now you'd be you know losing we don't we enter before we know which way we're going and there you go all done so whole open was uh, a total of seven trades and we were done within um, six seconds after the open you, if you can beat that scalping please let me know please message me and let me know how you can win money quicker than that using this system seven trades all done and now look at this look at this market grabbing look at this manipulation beautiful beautiful everyone's predicting up and there you go you see it's oversold already and it's what the market does to you but we just get in and grab this little spike we know it's going to go up 
Now it's wait again, wait for the bounce. Gold played ball, you say? Gold played ball, as it always does. It's US 30 that's manipulative at the moment. Now all you've got to do is just wait, catch the bounce back. We're going to get an upturn. Lisa Shallot, your view, please. Uh, yes, absolutely. This is the double top we're waiting for, you see. The DAX, yeah, doing the same way, brilliant. No, DAX is fine because I want to get some sales on DAX. And we've been calling for a 10 to 15. <laughs> so this could be good. We can adjust that level down the edges, uh, of our zone here. And we're going to look for Lisa, why has it been so difficult potentially to 250 points on that cell. That you the surface. Yeah, oh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. A re-entry on the cell on US 30. Uh, that a lot of this has to do with the concentration in the S&P 500 index itself. We've talked about the fact, you know, that the top 15 names at various moments have accounted for as much as 40% of the market cap of that index. And those technology, primarily technology and consumer discretionary names. Oh, we've got another 12. We've got another $15 there we did. We just entered straight in, straight out. 15, well, maybe $20, actually 12 pounds. So... There you go, that was another flash trade in and out, and that was on the sell this time, not the buy. This is what scalping, true scalping is all about. <clears throat> Reading price action, getting in and out, no time to mess around with bullshit 3 to 1 ratios and crazy stop losses. That's the way you're going to lose your money. Reading price action, we were in there and out, $20 done. So we've now done uh, eight trades on the open. We're all green at the moment. Um, DAX could be a possibility for a sell. I don't usually sell DAX uh, or trade DAX during the US Open, but the structure looks so good. I want to break here and I'm in. In, 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 all the way down here. <clears throat> At the moment, it's got a bit to go, so let's keep looking at gold. Gold's playing ball, yeah, gold's selling off perfectly, as you'd expect, thanks to the news being good. US 30 is the one that's playing playing manipulation. It's purely everyone's taking profits from all this buy, this is what, all this. Everyone's profiteering before the market goes up again. You've got to know that. <clears throat> There's no reason for the market to go down. It's been breaking highs, but look how it's retested. One, two, three times, then down. So people have gone, okay, I've had enough of this. It's not going to go any higher for now. Let me take my money off the table. Let me wipe out people's pending orders who are hoping to buy. <clears throat> we got 100 points. Easy. And now we'll just wait for this to either dip up and back in for a sell, or we'll just wait for it to come up here for a buy. It's so easy. Just wait. Work by some of our Bloomberg colleagues is the idea that going to wait now. For foreign entities in China. And what I might do is actually make some cheesy nachos while waiting. This is how good scalping gets. <laughs> this is a way for foreigners to own stakes. It is, of course, going to uh, stem the tide of capital to Chinese and all four Wall Street banks. To their ownership structures, including Alibaba and Media and Portuguese, under pressure to delist from the US as anyway. But that is just another level of uncertainty. SMPMI up next, remember. Structure in Hong Kong with regulatory approval. A market, so market. Eight minutes to go. So not a lot of comfort here for those investors. Alibaba and Media. Alibaba, of course, one of the biggest uh, IPOs ever going public. We know. That the previous marketing PMIs didn't do anything. <clears throat> so we need this result to be, like I say, above 60, below 58, uh, before 59, ideally, to get some kind of movement. And then we've got the big one, the ISM. So I'm not going to enter any trades now. Let's just hold. This is the bigger pattern we're looking for. Obviously, we've got three news events coming up now. Let's hang on in there. Peter Chair, I want to come to you on the politics of China just quickly. It is interesting to me that after debating this for years about the listing rules of Chinese firms, here in the United States, the debate has almost been exclusively taken by US politicians working out what they should and should not do. 
and here's the Chinese Communist Party that's come out and made the decision for them. What do you make of that? You know, this has been one of our themes almost for two years now, is this decentralization of China. China is reestablishing the Communist Party. They are pulling back. You know, they have stopped the, you know, the Jack Mons of the world from being public figures. They are instituting the digital yuan so that they can control the currency even more closely. So I think every time I look at China, all I can think about is this recentralization, this regrowth of the Communist Party establishing itself. And I think it makes China relatively... I just wish more people would watch and learn and earn. This is what we're all about here. Earning as quickly as we can in a sensible it makes China system the words of Peter Chin. yeah Dax no, just want this to break now we're in on a cell here in America here in US and gold we're holding we're not doing anything really on gold at the moment because it's a support zone and it's US 30 that we're looking to trade on the upcoming news event six minutes to go and then we'll have a break and we'll keep streaming live we'll have a break but construction spending, ISM all together, and then we've got crude oil. But the because is it a you know publicly a profit motivated company or is it a private company? And and also Jonathan, if you look at some of these recent uh, reports from the from the Chinese technology company, trade, their main point in about fifty minutes time. Profits, it's about you know we're, you know we're looking to do more regulation. Looking good so far on this. Looking good. From an economic standpoint, but from an investor standpoint, that's a negative. We would say negative short term and long term. And if you have kind of mean reversion bounces, we would use that to get more underway. I'm happy to play market maker and give you the number of Jay Pulaski because he disagrees with you both. The man from TPW had this to say. Take a listen. Bullishness is now shifting to uh, Asia. <laughs> Back in the chair. All <sighs> right. Technology in the United States right here will prove to be over the next six to 12 months a massive mistake. I think the opportunity is to go and look at things that have already been beaten up and buy those. And that's China. With all this uncertainty, China barely moved. China will be on a glide path in 2022. Lisa, we'd all like your view on this. Your response, please. Uh, so, look, as, as I think you know, Jonathan, you know, we would take the other side uh, of the negativity. Um, we're bulls on China. While we understand in the very short term, uh, you know, this is a very tough blow uh, for a lot of uh, American investors. The reality is, is that we think China is playing the cards that they have to play. Uh, and that is, you know, moving towards this program of common prosperity allows them uh, to sustain the promise uh, of delivering another 300 million people to an emerging middle class of consumers uh, and delivering that to the world. And that is China's growth proposition. That's what it's been uh, you know, for the last uh, decade as they moved away from being a pure exporter and manufacturing and infrastructure driven economy. Uh, and so I think they need to do this. We're investing in China where a lot of this uh, you know, bad news, as has been said, is discounted, uh, but we're doing it through A shares because we do think that the Communist Party, quote unquote, gets the joke um, and they want capital flowing into their economy. Uh, they just want Chinese citizens uh, to get rich from their companies, not American investors. And Lisa, you went straight to the economy. Optimistic, constructive on the economy. It's not quite the same thing as being optimistic and constructive. Let's bounce off our trend line. That's what we love, our trend line. Accurate. RSI's popped out of that zone, you see, so you could have got the flash sell, which we did. Back in, back up again. You want to see people come out of poverty and go into the middle class and beyond. But when it comes to the equity market, can you get that exposure more safely, given the worries we've had about getting exposure to those equities? When you can wake up one day and that party, that government can just change the story for you just like Street set to rebound. Well, it didn't rebound there, did it, on our chart? This is what you got to love about news and everything. Rebounds just for the certain few. Getting exposure to that growth is certainly one part of the story. I love it. But we do think that there are going to be companies uh, that are winners in China uh, that that can be accessed increasingly in that A share market, uh, who are going to be technology leaders, who are going to be you know category killers in their own right. It's um, like a rebound to me. Supported, uh, on their journey to get there. <laughs> That's what you got to love. That's what you got to learn. You got to laugh. You got to learn, and uh, don't trust everything that gets printed out. 
So uh, well, we're waiting for the market manufacturing PMI. Oh, we've got it here. Sorry already. No. So we're looking uh, 59.1 last month. 59 is predicted to be the same. In which case, that's good news. Like I say, if, if the market gets it right, it likes to pat itself on the back, and we might get a little spike to the upside on the news. So uh, this could be a good one. Again, you can trade gold and go the opposite way, or trade with it, and then we'll wait and see what's going to happen with the uh, ISM, the big one. Good to get your thoughts, sir. Keith Lerner to you as well. Lisa Shallot, always fantastic to catch up with you too on this equity market as we advance this Wednesday morning. One stock that is not advanced. Advance, yeah. Uh, you were right, Jonathan. We are advancing. That one's taken a bit of a beat in this morning, down 7.5%. The vaccine being mm -hmm. Moderna there. Getting hammered in early trading. We've been whipsawed over the last week or so. Yep. One currency in particular has been whipsawed even more. The Turkish lira. Turkey <laughs> directly <laughs> intervening in foreign exchange. One currency you don't want to trade, that's for sure, the Turkish Lira. <laughs> no, thank you. Instead of working alone, don't we have a better chance of solving all the world's biggest right, we've got one minute to go. Get ready, everybody. Let's see what we can do on this one. Really, for me, it'd be great if it was worse than expected and we get some sales. Everything's bullish. I'd like to trade some sales today, other than just minor corrections. Makes no difference to us as true scalpers. We just follow price action. So let's see what this news is going to be. Bloomberg has enhanced search on the terminal to deliver what you need when you need it. Predicting everything, we're just posting that to see what we're going to get here. You can answer phrases or ask questions. What do you want to know today? Ask a question or visit search go and find answers now. There's a pretty good chance that you use products made by Meta every single day. Never heard of Meta? That's because it's the new name for Facebook Inc. The parent. Two seconds, here we go. Let's see it print. Okay, perfect. That's worse than expected. Well, well, well. So, my wish comes true, right? Eh? ...for what he's dubbing the metaverse. That's a sort of mix of augmented and virtual reality worlds, which will let the user... Much of what he showed we're done, we're out. There you go, done, dusted. What do we get? We got 10, 15, 10. Looks at what he hopes might happen one day. So we got 25, 30, we got $50 there. $50 in and out. That's all you want. Yeah, and I'm only using 0.3, not going crazy like, you know, I don't say go crazy anyway, but I've just lowered it. So, worse than expected so we took three cells all done he will still have to deal with the long range challenge that faces concerns about 10 seconds beat that beat that 10 seconds we're done 58.3 so i said it wanted to be below and it was it was a good result that was in terms of was scalping maybe not for the market but look there you go there's the spike look at that perfect this is what's all about true scalping not messing around reading the markets reading the price action getting in getting out oh gold did we get the drop yeah you might have done where was I where was we no, gold went as well. So gold, yeah, gold was manipulated. Didn't really go the way. I said, don't trade gold with this one anyway. Now it might drop. <clears throat> if this pulls back below our average line, we can get a sell it on gold potentially. Beautiful. That. Perfect. 
Jens Nordvik there of Exante on the Turkish currency. We'll get to that in a moment. Some breaking news on the economy. Some PMIs with Mike McKee. Morning, Mike. Here we go. Well, breaking news, PMI. The PMIs are generally doing well around the world, and it appears in the United States is, uh, well, because we're buying stuff. The market PMI for manufacturing in the U.S. comes in at 58.3. That is down just a tick from the preliminary number, but it is off by about a point. 59.1 was the number in October. Now, around the world, the numbers have been pretty good, with the exception of Germany. They saw a slight decline, but the rest of the European nations... It was down, 58.3, you see. See how they try and manipulate it on the news and try and say it was good, and so you'd have bought on that and lost. Crazy. This is, the, again, how you read the news, read what everyone's telling you. Go through the BS. <clears throat> the market's already priced in the good news, so it's not going to be good. It's already costed in because they're expecting 59.1. That's why we get the drop. Look at that. Over the last few weeks, this morning, dollar lira intraday, a move of 1.9% in the Turkish lira's favour. The central bank selling foreign currencies to shore up the plunging lira for the first time since 2014. The central bank saying, quote, unhealthy price formations in exchange rates. Damien Sanders, nope. uh, you don't say. <laughs> well, is your manipulation, is your sell. Got in here, 42, bang, straight down. Top of that candle, look, your it closed, and look at that, you've got 200 pips. Okay, perfect. What's more important is it's accelerated at a quick pace and money supply imports. It has not accelerated as quickly as the debt build, but nevertheless, you know, the reserve situation across the whole of the BM is relatively good, it's relatively stable, with the exception, of course, of Turkey. And now you have CDS levels well above... Again, you see the news will twist it as if it's good news when really it's, it's not. This here is beautiful, beautiful little grab. <laughs> Love stuff like that, little wick. RSI look didn't break our zone either. If it, if it was good news, this zone would have been broken, would be green, we'd be buying, but we're selling. Well, not on the reserve side. I mean, look, if you just look at kind of the reserve situation across the M, as I mentioned, you know. So now we've got um, 10 minutes till the ISM. The big one. And like I say, we're looking for 61 of for a buy, and we're looking below. 61 for sales significant ideally we're lower than 60.8 and then we'll take a sell it has been a rough tough ride damien thank you been a similar story in the commodity market if you've been long it was a beautiful buy on gold you see there you go look there was your market pmi yeah, went as as you'd expect it, US 30 down, gold up, you see. So that was the market PMI spike there. Perfect. There was your entry point. Bang. How is the stage set for this one? Well, up in the air. Um, I think it's actually meeting right now. Um, this is largely an administrative meeting for the group. They've got uh, a budget set for the next year. And they have to uh, select the Secretary General as, as uh, the second term. As you'd expect. Posting that in the group, as you'd expect. 100, yep. And now the drop. But it just doesn't matter because you're already then out. You're not holding. You're not doing stupid, crazy stuff. You're doing the 100 point method. They will start to look at. Uh, in and out and you can measure it and see every time you can back test this yourself uh, uh, the, the main 200 if you want but with the spread i go for 100 now uh, we've got this coming up now tomorrow afternoon uh, in vienna time uh, what they will do with production for january uh, at the moment the default position is to add another 400,000 barrels a day but uh, there's a growing talking about oil swell of opinion that they will decide at the very least to pause that uh, for January, uh, mm. perhaps for longer, uh, and perhaps even consider a reduction in supply. Unreal, unreal turnaround. Of course, that position they had was yeah. fifteen, twenty dollars ago, which was about a month or so ago. Julian, we'll catch up with you later in the week. Counting down to that OPEC decision, that OPEC meeting a little bit later this week. We need some sector price action. This equity market has a bounce Bound. on the S&P. With your sector price action this morning, our stocks editor, Dave Wilson. Morning, Dave. Morning, John. All 11 of the main industry groups in the S&P 500 are higher in early trading. It's the commodity producers leading the way. Energy materials, we're seeing crude oil move up, and the producers go with them. 
Uh, we'll see what this uh, the ice stocks change comes out. Again, we're trading the dollar. It goes the opposite way. Higher than expected is negative. Lower is good. But if you're trading oil price, then you go with the news. That's generally the way. So we'll get in on oil as well as our final trade. And over that period up Apple leads top techs during the sell-off. Yeah. New York Stock Exchange's Fang Plus Index, which in fact almost all of those uh, 10 stocks in that gauge higher today. The one exception, uh, Chinese uh, search engine Baidu, which is basically a little change at the moment. But Apple really a standout lately within big tech. The legend, Dave Wilson. Dave, before you go, there's a big conversation right now on Wall Street about getting the youth, the younger people at banks into the office to learn from people with more experience. It takes people like you, sir, though, to be around to teach them. You've been around 31 years and you're one of those really, really special people that a lot of people around here look up to and can lean on and learn from. And I can tell you, sir, we're gonna miss you. You're retiring today and this will be your final hit on this program. I just wanna say thank you, Dave, for well, everything thank you. you've done. Yeah, it, it's been a real privilege over the last 31 years. And yeah, I've trained a few journalists in my time in formal classroom settings, you know, day to day in the newsroom. I mean, that's been a uh, big uh, satisfaction, satisfaction for me over time. Well, it's been a great, great privilege, privilege to, to share, share this newsroom with you, Dave. Thank you, Thank sir. you, Dave. Do, and will continue to do for all of us going forward. Dave Wilson there, our stocks editor. From New York City, coming up next, the market moving events you need to be watching. Your trading diary just around the corner. From the New market York PMI City, is beautiful, beautiful. A little more than one full percentage point. Some data still to come. The ISM at the top of the hour, 10 a.m. Eastern, yep. seven minutes away. From New Instead of working alone, ISM is due, the chance. big one. Marlon, we want it to be worse than expected and really push the markets down. As a quick check on DAX. Yeah, ranging. Range that's in a zone now called. I want this zone to break. Come on. Come down. Down, down, down. I want to come all the way back down to our neutral support zone, ideally. Need the news to be, well, I would like the news to be worse than expected, but we're not bothered overall because we trade with it. Gold pushing up, you see. Market PMI. Even if you missed out here, look, you've got back in on the buy. Easy money. Could have done that while talking. But like I say, it's too close now to the next news event. This could be the same. Could be repeat again. Could be buyers on gold. Could be sells on US 30. Let's see what we get. We've got four minutes to go. Construction spending alongside month on month October. It's a medium impact. Um, but the ISM PMI is the main one. Let's look for this bit to be if it's less than less than last month. 59. Perfect. Perfect sell time. Catch the market. We can get possible 300 points. Look down to our support zone here. Let's reset this now. It's what we're looking at. If it's bad news and if it's good news, then obviously we're looking to push up to our baseline. Here's kind of what we're looking at. You can either choose to hold or choose to get out. That is your call. That's your own personal way. I don't give financial advice. It's just you get in and out of the trade where you want to. I just set the boundaries that you can see here. So recap the headlines. You do not want to miss this story. How are you thinking about those dynamics? <laughs> Twenty-five minutes in, no firm conclusions. As we often say, the session is young. We're positive about one percent. Then on the S&P, we lost like one point six. Then as that comes one point one, we got a bounce here for Chairman Powell. Day two, anything but yesterday. Switch up the board and get to the bond market. Yields with a little bit of a bounce on a ten-year by three basis points to one forty-seven forty-nine. That move fades as well. Keep an eye on the front end. A lift yesterday, a lift again today by two basis points. Still short of 60 basis points, though, after seeing out 65. Three minutes to go. Good luck, everybody. Fingers on the buttons. Let's trade. A trading diary. Powell and Yellen testify. ISM manufacturing coming up. Biden speaking then. They'd speak tomorrow. Another round of initial jobless claims as well. And wrapping up the week. On Friday with NFP Friday, on Friday, yes, our favourite ever news event of all time, all time.
375 Five. from New York. Thank you for choosing Bloomberg TV. This was the countdown to the open. This is Bloomberg. One minute to go, just over. Countdown has begun. DAX is 1.84 overbought. CAC 1.6. Dow Jones 0.72 heading. 1.3 in the SP and NAS 1.2 as well. So all stacking up for. Countdown's coming. We're getting ready again. Load it up. Good luck, everybody. Let's see what we get. Thirty seconds to go. US thirty in the neutral zone, ranging, ready to go either way. Got plenty of time. Still 150 points to the top side if it is good news. Plenty to the downside if it's bad news. Hold the reverse, remember. The other has an ego in the orbit of Mars. Who's that? Construction spending is bad. Or point two. Conversation. It's a fairly accurate summary of this show, isn't it, Tom? The eyes are going to do the whole thing. On the supply chain, are you starting to see things improve? And if you are, where specifically, sir? Well, this year we have been mostly affected by semiconductor situation, and we believe that the quarter three was the quarter that was most affected. 61.1 so it's as expected so that should be some good news actually Let's see what we get Let's see if we get a dip on gold actually as well Puerto Rico is still in peril huge swaths of the island are still without power running for access to medical care Experts estimate that it will take years before these services are restored island-wide. Much of the blame has been placed on FEMA for a slow response in comparison to recent disasters on the mainland. MSM, PMI, as expected. Its complexity and scale has proven more challenging than anyone anticipated. And filling the gaps between an overextended public sector and a suffering populace falls on the private citizens. Brilliant. We're just ending the US 31s there. Brilliant. We've done it. That's it. We've got 47.50. We've got 135 pounds on that. So we've got about 250 dollars on that one there. So that will do nicely. Three buys out in uh, one minute 32 seconds again. Some might, might be tempted to lay the a disaster capitalist, seeking lucrative government contracts for his expertise. But, but as Anderson, Anderson finds himself in the middle of the... go, there's the beautiful spike up. Oh, that's exactly what we'd like to see. Target the island's hardest hit. And let's see if gold... 
We're here in the down. Telecommunications restored. It may or may yeah, not be but basic services are in place. They're able to get food, they're able to buy things, they're surviving. And when you look outside of the San Juan area, you can go 15 minutes from here and find areas that are devastated. I'm working, working on the devastated side. Today, he's put together a boots on the ground mission to provide medical care to some of the island's most isolated and vulnerable mm -hmm. residents. Steve Barron is one of Anderson's business associates. He offered an extra car and a set of hands. So we received an um, initial report from a nurse that was out in the area. We're headed to the northeast. Beautiful. Utuado. Great result there, everybody. Great result. Nice trading. Nice scalp. If you got it, 61.1, as expected, is always a nice one to get in on the buy. You won't get in on the sell. You know, the market, like I say, pats itself on the back and says, yeah, we got it right. Priced it incorrectly. We've got a little point one up. Um, but that, that will do nicely. First stop was the home of an 82 year old and so now we're going to look wait for the oil storm and he's been living alone in a back shed for nearly two months so we'll wait on oil now as well and if gold i only entered on us 30 but if gold uh, comes into the neutral zone here then i'm going to go for the sell so obviously just wait just wait and hold because it might it's probably going to manipulate against you going to double top out on here and come down so just wait you know you only got to choose one to enter in on and it's usually us 30 is the best better one as we know so uh now we're going to switch up to um oil Get in on the oil as well xti oil bang gonna go uh five five dollars if yeah five dollars a pip on oil here try and get a hundred on this next um, news you go oh look at the W that's forming on oil it's amazing if we can get good news on the oil stocks Guys are in a bad situation before, and now they're struggling for real basic things. Got 25 minutes. Going from so we have got time to get some nachos on and another coffee. Perfecto, and that's the last news event of the day. Mostly. And what's your role? Um, goes to the machine. I'm lucky enough to be able to communicate with the uh, state of Puerto Rico. For a ghost, Robert makes his presence well known. Not only was he the de facto leader of the mission, now with FEMA in tow, he created his own maps to survey storm damage. So we're, uh, they don't take any cells on um, gold yeah, yet. Until it's Perhaps hit. He managed to earn himself a coveted FEMA badge without actually working for them. And it's the 61. It's good trading for you. Prints the news pretty quick. Not 61.1. Forecast 61. Better than last month. Better than as predicted. Market goes up, perfect. Look at that spike, you see, on gold. Manipulation, all bullshit. So you just got to hold, wait. You always get it. Gold, perfect. Look at that. The US started up, perfect. Look. That's predicted. That's why it's safe for always the US 30 over gold. Uh, don't sell on the gold yet. You know, just take a buy. If it goes to 75, we'll take a buy on gold. We'll sell gold once it uh, comes back into our neutral zone. Just got to wait. We'll just wait. Like I say, we're focusing on oil as well. That's good because that means that's took us to today for trades we've done. Oh. You can see San Juan from here. But you can't get there. It's like the Emerald City. We're doing about 30 trades now. We're where we need to be. Uh, target wise, we don't need to enter any more trades. I'm doing this purely for the channel. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can catch uh, catch a sell on, uh, on the ISM. We'll have to move this because it went up. Even the news was as expected, gold shot up. Let's 
so you don't panic it's going to hit this resistance and back down so now's a couple of five to get a dip to get the sell in just wait for it to come back So we're going to look for 200 points. Sell. Hold this time. I'm just going to set that and my stop loss just while I go on. Get my nachos out of the oven. <laughs> Trader's dream. And another coffee of course. See if this pushes up. We've got a heavy resistance zone here and here. Um, let's just see if we get the manipulation it comes back down. Going to be back down to here. Here's our flat line of our KG. So we'll go there. Get rid of this one here. Whether out of altruism or the lure of a big gig. 1793. It bounces back down to here. We'll continue on up. Puerto Rico has essentially been a colony for 400 years. It was treated poorly by the Spanish. It was not treated well by the United States when they first got here. Puerto Rico can continue in the way that it's always been, or Puerto Rico can rebuild itself like nothing that's ever been. So we've got 21 minutes. Crude oil news. It'll be a good one to end the stream on. US 30, perfect luck. Look at that. Perfect W. Bang, bang. Gold look, yeah, it might get a rejection. This could be good, could be good, could be good. Look on gold. We've got, basically we've got, we've got 200 pips I'm looking for, but we've got 200, 200, 266 in the bag here, potential, nice, see that reject, right, back in five minutes.
When I met him first online, I found him to be really sweet. I think I was the one who was talking for an hour. He was just listening. When we met, I I saw her. She was uh, beautiful, intelligent, and kind, which was, I mean, something that I was I was looking for. Anshu and Sumit are one of about 12 million couples that get married in India every year. Unlike their parents' generation, they're not from two close villages, but from two cities on opposite sides of the country. And their love didn't start through community matchmaking, marriage brokers or classified ads in newspapers, but began online. So we met through jeevansati.com. So it's basically an online portal where we have detailed profile of different grooms and brides. It makes uh, a lot of remote profiles who, who are located in distant areas more accessible. Thanks to growing internet and smartphone usage, matrimony websites and apps in India are starting to disrupt the matchmaking industry. More and more people are finding their partners at the click of a mouse. Givenseti.com Well, we're back. Whew. And thank you so much, Gold. Beautiful. You've just delivered me another $300 while I was away. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm going to make cheesy nachos more often. There we go. We've got four trades in there. We won 60, 58, 75, and 70 on that sell. Uh, took, what, three minutes? There you go. So, uh, there was the cell. See, the bar was just a manipulation. There was the cell. Now, I'll move that. Excuse me while I munch. There you go. Time flies when you're in love. Perfect. I say um, gold went exactly as we said. The massive event usually lasts three days and the various ceremonies and celebrations involve the entire two families and hundreds of guests. Luckily, there are websites and apps for that. We searched online. Perfect. In what a day. And it's made faster and efficient. Again, that was only using 0.5. I might have got to stick to that. Forget. I'm going bigger lots. 0.5. Perfect. Look at it drop now. I said 200 points. Look at it drop. This is amazing. And she and Sui are officially married in a religion that has gone on for thousands of years. But their love started in a very new way. Technologies might be and you are sturdy up, look at that. Date and get married in India, but they're definitely not changing everything. Why do you need to trade any other way? Instead of working on love, don't we have a better chance of solving all the world's biggest challenges when we come together? What people do, there you go. We believe the chemistry between people is the chemistry that matters. Sabek. You were 30 straight up, gold manipulated a little bit, but we get there, look. Don't we have a better chance of solving all the world's biggest challenges when we work together? At Sabic, we believe the chemistry between people is the chemistry that matters. Sabic. Let's see if we can get anything on the oil. End our day.
うん We all love that news as well. Now IA1, remember, could be a little bit manipulative again. Compared to the IAS one. Let's see, nine minutes to go. Beautiful W pattern forming there. Dax is now 2%. <laughs> Woohoo, well overbought. We're due corrections. FTSE is 1.2. Dax flying at the moment, flying. When we get a drop, it's going to be a nice drop. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has become a symbol of everything the Republican Party stands against. Everyone gets a right to basic health care. We need strong oversight of these banks. A legal scholar and a consumer advocate turned politician, Warren has branded herself as a champion of the working class and made a career out of standing up to big business. While rumors of the 2020 presidency bid remain just that. I'm not. <clears throat> Let's wait for this oil then, what we got, what we got on the table, we got uh, five minutes, five minutes to the last trades of the day. Thank you everybody.
Here we go, 30 seconds. Let's load up, load up on oil. Let's see if we can have another nice little end to the trading day for me. We've been at it, like I say, since Asian session. Probably 30 seconds. Let's see what we get. Let's see if we can get 100 points on oil. Load up the oil chart, there we go. 
you can see now it's all looking bullish at the moment are we going to get a good news and push up or we're going to get bad news and push down who knows this is what it's all about here we go <sighs> Crude oil and the gas. <laughs> Way worse than expected, okay. Wait, and we're done. Thank you, sir. Well done. Now who the hell can beat that? 71, 63 and 60 in 36 seconds. Can someone beat that? Then let me know. 36 seconds and we just bagged ourselves $300. No time to mess around. There you go. If you're on chart, look at that, look at that drop. There you go. Why wouldn't you want to trade that? Why wouldn't you want to do this? Why are you holding trades? result and that was easy money another way around it there you go perfect Well, there we go team, that's a clean sweep, a clean sweep on the news there. Thank you. That's it, we're all done. We are all done. Well, perfectly dropping down, look, on that news. So easy. Way worse than expected. Look at that, the numbers and bowel changes, 300,000. There was only one thing that could happen to that, the price of crude down. The US 30 actually goes up, as we know, as we said, it's in the news. It says, worse than expected is good for the dollar. Not good for the crude oil price though.
Great stuff. Well, we'll go back to see what Bloomberg's saying. And that's it. I'm out of the game for today. That's it. Like I say, that's 35 trades all done and dusted. <coughs> well in the green. We've got some money in the bank ready for NFP on Friday. Uh, that will be our next live stream. So keep a look out for that. So congratulations to everyone who followed me today. Uh, nice wins on gold, US 30. And we just took a nice win. Probably the biggest win of the day on oil. Look at that. A beautiful drop. All on that news. Squatting on a bench in the absence of an office, dealing with letters from Only two months after Khan entered the Commons as a member of Parliament. London was attacked by Islamist extremists. Oh, there you go. Well, thanks for joining the live stream again today. I say we've done 35 trades. We've more than covered everything. Um, and again, if you like what we do, hit the like button, subscribe, tell people about this channel, tell about Mohawk Forex Group. And if you want to join, go to the website www.mohawkforex.com and uh, look forward to seeing you in the Discord group along with the rest of the team where I can teach you how to true scalp no messing and get access to the axe trading system that we use here as well along with price action and the fundamentals of course which is the most important thing of our trading so um until the next live stream which will be nfp our favorite trading day uh, take care all stay safe avoid covid and trade safe more importantly and i'll see you on the next live stream take care all 